Good morning, traders. I'm Dennis Dick. And I'm Joel Alconin. Welcome to Wednesday's edition of Pre-Market Info. Well, we're going to be looking at the aftermath of yesterday's big sell-off there, Joel. We have bounced a little bit overnight. Actually, the bounce was pretty good. We got up to 16.58 and a quarter. We are starting to fizzle out here, though, and that is not good news that we're not bouncing harder here from the big sell-off yesterday. Right. Uh, after uh, the markets, uh, the S&Ps or the, the regular uh, stocks closed at four, the S&Ps got as low as uh, 16.46. Uh, that's uh, 50 cent low from uh, the low on September 9th. Uh, we did get a little pop here in the pre-market, and it's funny, Dennis, when uh, we were doing our uh, presentation yesterday at the University of Michigan uh, Business School, the market kept on bumping up against 1657, 1658. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. And just so that's uh, that's your resistance for now. On on days like this, you need to go up. You need to take out that Globex high, 1658 and a quarter. You need to get the momentum going to the upside. So that's going to be a good resistance point. After that, what about all those multiple lows we had at the 1663 level? That should be another good uh, level of resistance. And I'm sure bulls will uh, be protecting that 1646 low if uh, we get under the 1650 level. I think there's going to be a lot of overhead supply. I think as you get into the high 1650s and approach that level, which was support before 1662, 1663, we had bottomed out there two or three days in the past. And that old support can become new resistance as you have people that have obviously been picking those bottoms, maybe caught yesterday in the sell off. And as the stock gets back up to those levels, they don't like to, you know, you get that whole psychological behavior of loss aversion and those people probably would be coming in if they're still holding the stocks and possibly looking to lighten up there so i think as you do get into the higher 1650s i think you're going to get resistance now and the path of least resistance might actually be lower and it looks like it's lower for gold here today too joel because gold is trading down again here we just cannot get away from 1300 it looks like we're getting pulled right back into there at that level once again uh, yeah, it looks like uh, the analyst uh, from Goldman uh, is uh, looking a little bit better today. Yeah. Uh, went up, had a couple highs in the 1320 area, and we did get up to 1330 and change yesterday, but there was just absolutely no follow-through on that. Uh, then they uh, they took it down overnight right off the open. We're trading lower here. Are coming into some uh, minor support points, though. Uh, you did have a low at uh, 13.05.10 on the 4th, 13.02.02 even on the 3rd. So there's a couple levels. In fact, uh, we just uh, just went through that 05.10 level. Below that, not a lot of solid support points until you get to that 12.76.90 number, the low on the 2nd, which has been the low of the move. Uh, but as of right now, we are coming into some minor support. And if you look at the miners, though, this is my concern here with gold, is some of the miners are making new lows now. Newmont is breaking out to a new low on the move here this morning. Um, obviously concerned here that the pricing of gold is, you know, possibly going to continue to move down here. We are trying to break under support here, and we are this morning old support right around this whole 2635 where we kind of closed on support, and we're taking it out here in the pre-market. Right, uh, yep, just following the bullion lower. So, uh, have you been using that these levels uh, for you know to cover shores or potential uh, long trades? Uh, here's your shot. Let's uh, look here just quickly at crude before we go into the aftermath on the individual equities there because we got crude trading 103.35 here right now. This is winding up, man. We have been <laughs> winding up and winding up and getting tighter and tighter ranges. I don't know which way it feels like breaking, but we definitely have major overhead resistance up there just above 104 where we have topped out four out of the last five trading sessions. Uh, support's well-defined too, but that's down around the 101 and a half area. Right, uh, yeah, just that uh, the mid 104s uh, helped you, you know, was your resistance point last week and then stepped it down, hit 10408 yesterday, but boy, that was just for like a nanosecond. Very, very tight range yesterday uh, for the for crude. Uh, that 10285 yesterday's low, we're holding above that, that's minor resistance or minor support. Uh, below that, uh, you get into the 101 handle and uh, the major support at 101, 105 and 06, a double bottom from uh, the, the 30th and the 31st here. But, uh, yeah, what that's probably like the tightest range in crude, uh, yesterday's range that you've had in uh, a couple weeks. So, uh, you know, 
using that 104 level as major resistance right now. Let's look at some of the aftermath from yesterday. You had some major sell-off and some of those stocks that were very hot. Start with Facebook here because Facebook had a horrendous day yesterday. Uh. It had traded above 50 for like seven sessions in a row. It was trying, trying, trying. Yesterday it just uh, broke down hard through 50 and uh, fell almost $3. Got down to 47.08 actually. Closed near the lows of 47.14. It is bouncing this morning. We're up 46 cents we're getting a little bit of a bounce here but man if you're along this thing and you're you know banking that it was going higher it looks like kind of the trends almost breaking there now obviously it's going to probably be overhead supply if you ever get back up to the 49 50 dollar area here so i don't know if i see this thing bouncing back here right away yeah too bad they don't have like weekly and a half puts <laughs> weekly and <a> half. You <laughs> want Wednesday hump day, but it's hump day. Yeah, or, or Tuesday because, <laughs> Tuesday. man, my 50s that uh, went off the board worthless on Friday yeah. uh, would be They do that. They, they, they pen, pen those prices there to try to obviously uh, put as many as cl uh, you know options expiring worthless as they possibly can, and then they break down. That's often how they you know, do I, it. I, I don't know if my buddy Brandon's listening to the show today, but, you know, I've been discussing that with him and he says forget the weeklies if you have an idea go two weeks out pay the premium you know give yourself a little bit more time time is and, key uh, yeah time was definitely the element here uh, but look at look at the low 4708 that comes down and fills a gap that you had in the issue uh, back in September 23rd you had a 4755 high so nice little gap fill there uh, so also 4708 we're trading 50 cents above that you know it's, Use that as a good support point. I think if you take that out, uh, there's not a lot on the books until 46.29. But you did stop near a whole number. You are trading up in the pre-market, yep. uh, so I just got to respect that. Well. Yep. yep, you got to respect that as you know, probably a better place to uh, you know cover a short than uh, initiate a long. But uh, don't see any upgrades or downgrades in it right now. So. Uh, be interesting to see if this $47 level can hold. And did you see the price line action yesterday? Holy oh. cow, PCLN. We talked about it on the show and we said <laughs> if this thing takes out, I was saying 1036, you were saying 1040. Uh, basically just saying if it takes out those lows, there's not a lot below. And holy cow, there was nothing below it. It blew through every level as it took that out. Straight down to a thousand bucks and actually cut through that too. Got as low as 983. So you had to just acquire 70 or 65 point sell off here in price line. It did bounce back to close near a thousand. It is trading over a thousand this morning at 1001, but you got some nervous longs in there now. Yeah, you got to have a big set to trade this one oh. here. It's, uh, yeah, Bob, going through that 1040 level, you had to be quick. Uh, just looking at this uh, 983 low that you had here. Uh, that took out the September 23rd low by uh, 986.06. Took that out by three bucks. So I'll call that whole area uh, major support here. I uh, don't have uh, my calculator here, but uh, almost a hundred point move on the downside. I uh, would love to see this thing get back up to uh, you know the 1020, 1025 mm -hmm. uh, level on a bounce and get a little retracement there for a little bit lower risk short. Uh, but uh, keep an eye on that low from yesterday, 983. I think you might and pretty see good, some follow through yeah, here, pretty too. Good I'm volume. Still on this one. Yeah, yeah it's major volume. volume. It was a washout day. It was a lot of people that have been sitting on a lot of gains for a long time, and they were taking profits yesterday. They were like, we need to get out of this thing, lock in those profits. They were doing it in all the high flyers. It was basically massive profit taking yesterday. People are nervous. They don't want their profits to go away in all these stocks, and they were selling all the leaders. LinkedIn, too, same story. LNKD, it's been one of your leaders all year. Yesterday, lost 20 points, just kaboom. You know, a quick to almost 78%. Uh, just like that. Uh, right, that uh, still getting into a little bit of a gap area from the positive earnings. You had the 217.74 low. Uh, you still got a gap down to uh, fill to 213.48. So I think some people that have been uh, holding this short here uh, will be looking at that area as a potential cover. And then also, traders should figure out that, you know, if we do get a bounce here, 
that 50% retracement should good, be a good level on the rebound. Stock that is holding up well here in the pre-market. Apple bouncing back a lot here this morning. Um, obviously, yesterday had a little bit of a sell-off, but not nearly as bad as some of these other stocks because you know it obviously hadn't run nearly as far. We've been talking about the 4092 area, really have been uh, resistance for it, and only got up to 490.64 before the sell-off started. Got right down to another big hole number though, 480.54 yesterday. Bounced, and now we are right in the middle up here at 485. Yeah, it uh, in. Uh four of the last five trading sessions uh, Apple snuck above 490 uh, but hasn't posted one close above there and we've kind of been talking about the range in this 480 to 490 boom you got right down to the lower mm -hmm. end of the range you get a nice bounce here so uh, you know if you're shortening here you know you know you have <laughs> you know there's nothing but air up to 490 uh, coming back on the downside below this 480 54 level uh, you had a couple lows, 7838 and 7860. So, uh, uh, you know, well defined support and resistance here in Apple. Uh, trade the range dot com. Goog Monster had a rough day uh, too yesterday, and it is actually, if you can get down to the six or seven points from where it closed, it will be coming into support where we bounced out of here in August. So we talked about this level back in June. We bounced out of, off of 847, and then in August we got down. We actually snuck out and, and quietly cut through it around 845. But from 845 to 847, you have found buyers over the last four months. I'm assuming that those guys might be there again, and obviously shorts bringing in, you know, just looking at those key levels like that. We're about 10 points away from there because we are up a couple bucks in the pre-market here. But if the sell-off does continue, or for whatever reason, Google sell-off continues, I think you'll find support probably about 10 bucks lower. Yeah, major, major support. This thing is, uh, since making that all-time high at, uh, at uh, 9.28, have a little bit longer perspective chart here. It's been like an 850 to 900 range, uh, very mm -hmm. well-defined. Now you get below, I tell you, we break below this 850 here, and uh, I know I never make money buying out of the money puts. but 840, man, don't get yourself too early there, though. Support is support until it's broken. Okay. I'd say an 845. 850, right. I think you're too early to be short in the stock. I want to see it cut through that 845, 56 low that we had on August 30th. That's the only way that I'm going to get bearish the stock because first time down here, too, there's got to be some shorts going to bring in. I wouldn't be surprised if you do catch a bounce at that level. I mean, if we just cut through like a hot knife through butter, though, don't get yourself caught either. We start trading 842, 840. That means support is probably pretty broken there. So support, support until it's broken. So don't go too or, early, yeah. Joel. <laughs> Oh, as usual, <laughs> uh, you know the uh, it's down um you know forty points in uh, four trading sessions. So you know it is coming into support here. Um, keep an eye on that level. Maybe a close below eight fifty uh, would be something you can bank on too. But uh, you know first start using. I mean, if you're riding a short position here from you know nine hundred, obviously you know yesterday's low eight fifty one sixty three is you know a relevant number here. And then uh, the you know major support you mentioned eight forty five fifty six. Alcoa kicking off earnings season with All a right. bang. Your favorite stock in the whole world. Eleven cents versus six. They beat on the bottom line. Five point seven seven billion versus five point six three billion. They beat on the top line. And the stock rallying on two hundred and thirty five thousand shares this morning. It's trading up at eight eighteen here. Uh, again, I will reiterate the numbers that I said from yesterday. I was looking, and, and you can look at the pre-market high, but yesterday we gave you these numbers. 828 and 829 was the highs on August the 8th and August the 9th. Um, or August, I'm sorry, August the 8th and August the 13th, or the 12th and 13th. But anyways, in the pre-market here, got up to 826. These levels can work, and obviously that's where it's found resistance in the past. That's where it's found resistance in the pre-market. That's the number I'm looking at for the regular session as well, that whole 827, 828 area. Yeah, uh, Jake remarked he's been in the business for a few years. He's like, is this the first time Alcoa's ever made money? <laughs> With it's the his first earnings? time in a while, I think. Uh, they never yeah, make a lot of money. Maybe they'll put them back in the Dow now since uh, this blockbuster report here. Uh, 826 pre-market high. I got an 828 high on the, uh, September 27th. So use that uh, that area as resistance. Uh, if you come back, uh, you know, down now, this probably it was resistance at eight. I just uh, imagine that eight dollar level will now act as support. 
Yum Brands reported earnings Ooh. not good. It wasn't very yummy over there. 85 cents versus 93, so they missed on the bottom line. They missed on the top line, too. 3.47 billion versus 3.53 billion. That is knocking the stock down significantly here in the pre market. It's down over four bucks right now. Close at 71.30. It's trading down at 66.80. Uh, 65 71 low he's got a buck bounce off that so uh have to look at that as a you know good support point since a uh, little bit of a little bit of a rounding bottom here on the pre-market formation so a 65 71 low may be uh, safe here trading at the highest level since making that low here at 66 83 um, going to the dailies here really can't come up with anything to support that 6571 low. Uh, I'd probably look ahead of uh, ahead of that. 6672 was a low on May 3rd, and then if you get below that, uh, you got a long ways to go to the $63 level. But uh, might have got a little overdone um, on the, uh, you know hitting this thing down to 6571. Mickey D is having a little sympathy move with the Yum earnings. It is trading down, obviously, despite the S&P futures trading up. You can see right on the initial report they got really excited to sell Mickey D's off. Knocked it down to 93 off the Yum earnings. It had rallied back this morning and then was trading around 94. It's drifting down here again, though. Offered down at not down at 93.79, so it's offered down 15 cents. Light volume, but when you look at the dailies on this one, it doesn't look good. This $94 is absolutely key for it to hold. If it does indeed open below this, this is a breakdown day for McDonald's. Yeah, two lows at 9394 and 9401, and you're only 15 cents away from there. So that 94 is going to be a, a major, major resistance here. Um, also had some uh, some lows at uh, 9319 and 9330, so those could be your first stopping points. Uh, below that, if you get opens below this 9390, yeah, opens up down to 9181. So 94 should be a real good uh, real good swing number if it can get back up to that level this morning. Family Dollar reported earnings FDO, and they were actually uh, looked okay on the bottom line, 86 versus 84, but they missed on revenues. 2.50 billion versus 2.56 billion. Stock is down another two dollars here in the pre-market after having not a good day yesterday, not a good day the day before. The stock has just quietly in the last three days lost over five points. It's trained down now at 67 and a quarter after closing at 69.45. It's a, it's interesting how you get these uh, these moves ahead of earnings. You know, you can just tell. Somebody's leaning the right way on that yep, one. Yep, yep. Someone was definitely leaning the right way here. Uh, you've uh, come off the 75.29 high, uh, really with a vengeance here. Uh, looking at the pre-market, uh, you've got you've got this low is uh, 67.20. Right there right now. Not yeah, not getting much of a bounce mm -hmm. though. Uh, I don't know. You see how far you have to go up. Uh, if you go out to uh, July 23rd, uh, you had a low at 67.05, so that's something that uh, First you level. might want to, yeah, that's a level you want to keep an eye on. If that and, doesn't uh, hold, ooh, there's not much below, because we really gapped up looking back on the 10th of July from 65.30 up to 69.70, or I say what goes up quickly can go down quickly, so if we start cutting through 67, there's a lot of air below down to 65. So it needs to hold 67 okay. for the Bulls to have an argument here if you're picking bottoms anyways. Okay, I agree. Costco, C-O-S-T earnings missed. Everybody's missing here this morning. Anyways, dollar forty versus a dollar forty-six. So they don't like the fact that they missed on obviously the bottom line here. And the stock is trained down a dollar seventy this morning. One ten fifty-one after closing at one twelve twenty-one. Yeah, just a tight range here after the news came out. 110.25 low. Uh, 111, someone seems to be wanting to wiggle out of some stock there. So we'll use that. Two, that looks uh, big. Yeah, 110 and a quarter. Uh, looking at the daily here. 110. Yeah, you came down to 110.19 on uh, August 29th. So uh, for only uh, 20 cents away from there, I use that as your first uh, minor su support point. Uh, below that, well, oh, you bought them there in July, uh, July too. Mm -hmm. So that 110, you Costco bulls, man, you better hold on to this 110 level. Uh, below that, uh, you could be dropping down into uh, you know the 107 and a half, 10, 108 area. But 
I like Costco. I, do I go too. shopping there. I put, I get all this stuff. I put it in the cart. You know, I get one of those, uh, one of those dollies. You know, and fill it up with beer and stuff. And then <laughs> you know, you, try, you go up there and it's like a hundred and you know ninety two dollars. And you go to the regular grocery store and you pick up stuff for four days and it's one hundred and twenty bucks there. So uh, I like the store, but uh, the stock here better hold one ten. One ten. Let's look here. We got a merger. Joseph A. Bank, J O S B, is buying Men's Warehouse, M W, offering 48 bucks a share in cash here this morning. M W rallying significantly off of this. Not up to the price, though, so they are putting a little bit of risk premium in there. But it's trading 46.45, though, so $1.50 off of the takeout price of 48 bucks. It did get up to 47 and a half here, so somebody got a little excited and almost bought it right up to the takeout price. But a little bit of risk premium, where like we saw the Cooper Tire deal fall apart, so deals can, you know, not go through. But here you are, Men's Warehouse getting a good left, a nice premium being paid here. It's up 31% this morning. Yeah, uh, not. I don't do a lot of a lot of shopping at uh, the men's. I don't do a lot of shopping, but uh, men's warehouse, uh, obviously a huge premium here. Uh, Joseph A. Banks. I mean, whenever you can buy uh, three shirts for the price of one, you know, you got to run over there. <laughs> I I don't know. This just doesn't. This merger doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, you got the price in the Joseph A. Banks here. Uh, Let's see. That's it is getting a crazy lift, too. So here, you know, and I guess they like the synergies know. between the two, but it used to always work. This is how mergers used to work. It used to be the acquirer would obviously go down because they're paying a premium, and the acquiree, the men's warehouse getting acquired, would rally. So it makes sense a men's warehouse would be up here, but does it make sense that Joseph A. Bank rallies 10% off of this? It's it's like, um, you know, that, that all of a sudden, just because these two companies together, all this new wealth is created. I just don't know if I see that. Um, you know, and obviously right. here, you know, in the pre-market, you know, in the, in the market, the price, you can't argue with the price that's doing that, but I don't know if this is going to hold up as well as, you know, the men's warehouse. Looking here, I want to look at this JOSB back on the 14th of August. We got up to 45.88. We are trading there right now. If we go back into May, we got up into that level as well, too. So there is overhead resistance up here at this $46 level, and that's right where we're struggling here right now in the pre-market. But what are they going to call it? Joseph A. Warehouse or <laughs> Men's Banks Clothier? I, I just, I don't know. I think if I owned a Men's Warehouse, I'd be so happy that that oh, yeah. merger, I'd have to, I'd have to let it go. and. Yeah, and if I own this JOSB, you know, looking to just pop on a <laughs> yeah, a ten percent merger, I'd 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 wash my if I had these stock from my portfolio, you know, only a recommendation here. But well, man. we don't give recommendations, but that's what yeah. Joel says he would do, and I think I yeah. would agree with you. I think you know you're getting a lot of you're getting a good gift here because both stocks flying up here this morning. Um, interesting, and, and we're coming into a resistance area too, so we're almost getting a technical setup too. And but you, you also could, yeah, you also could, uh, you know, the people that uh, you know didn't take advantage of the Cooper Tire, oh, yeah. you know, premium there, you know, they're, uh, it. yeah, they're bombing now. So just a way to look at things here, and see what the follow through is on the open on the Joseph A. Banks. Loser of the day is going to be A R I A, which is Ariad Pharmaceuticals. It is now down a cool 65%, pausing enrollment of their studies in I C L U S I G, Icolucid or something. <laughs> I never can pronounce yeah. these drug names, but yeah. anyways, drugs obviously not good here. The stock closes $17.14 and it's opening at 6 bucks. Maybe below now it's five ninety nine. <laughs> um, five fifty two is where the stock traded in March of uh, March of two thousand and eleven here. Holy so you've been cow. holding on to your short here. You've cut. You come down. You kind of plunked here at the six dollar level, and you're not really bouncing. But I just gotta imagine that uh, if someone's coming in with any kind of short position here, uh, you know, looking for offers that are coming into this area. Uh, you never know when some, you know, wow, there's some good volume associated with oh, this, too. 10 million yeah. shares. It's true. Yeah. This morning, and they, wow. And it was halted for a while. Just reopened from the halt at 7.30, I think. So, you know, you've, you've traded all this volume here in the last hour. It's crazy volume. That's just wow. 
massive wash. Margin call, margin call. Everything's get... got problems there. I mean, that's that's ugly. That's what happens when you buy. You got to be careful when you're trading and investing in these pharmaceutical companies, and they're one-trick ponies. And you know, it looks like that's the case here. They get a little bad news on one drug, and this is what can happen here. And obviously, uh, stocks can fall like that. These you know, things are high risk, high return. The drug gets through, and you know, it could be going the other way. But drug doesn't get through, and this is what can happen. So you always want to be careful trading these pharmaceutical companies, these biotech companies, because there's high risk, but or there's high return, but there's also very high risk. Joel, let's just go back here. The overall market here, we are treading water, up four points. What do you think's going to happen here? Do you think this is the day, um, you know, that we're going to continue yesterday's sell-off, or are we going to continue to, you know, rally here and bounce back? Um, I mean, you know, we don't have any data since, you know, or anything to shake up the market since the government's closed <laughs> here. Um, well, we got Fed I, minutes. I think Fed minutes are coming out. Oh, that's right. Soon. That's right. Um, you're getting a little bit of amounts here. I, I mean, I think that if we can get above the 60, 1658 and a quarter level, get above and hold that, then you know we can get a little sprint here up to that 1663 level. I think if we do get up another 10 points from here, uh, you know that might be it. You know, on the upside, coming back down. I mean, you don't have anything substantial to look at until that 1645 or 1646 was the low yesterday. 1645 and a half was a low on September 9th, but you're getting a 10 point bounce above that. I think buyers are going to step in, you know, ahead of that level. Um, so you're probably looking for like a 1645, 46, 47 range up to the uh, upper 1660s or 1662, 1663. That's our show for today, guys. Have a great trading day. Back at you tomorrow.